IRIB, or the Islamic Republic of Iran Broadcasting, reported that on the 8th of June, an Iranian fighter jet developed a technical problem that killed both of the aircraft's pilots. The aircraft was the US-made F-5 fighter, and the mishap took place at an airbase near the city of Desfoul. Desfoul is 444 kilometers or 270 miles from the capital, Tehran, and near the border with Iraq. IRIB did not provide further details on the nature of the incident, and Iranian media did not specify if the plane crashed. The TV said it happened before takeoff. It did not elaborate. As per reports, the investigation was underway to ascertain the cause for the malfunction of the fighter jet. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how Iran's Air Force is falling apart. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. The Northrop F-5 is a family of supersonic light fighter aircraft initially designed as a privately funded project in the late 1950s by Northrop Corporation. There are two main models, the original F-5A and F-5B Freedom Fighter variants and the extensively updated F-5E and F-5F Tiger II variants. The design team wrapped a small, highly aerodynamic fighter around two compact and high-thrust General Electric J-85 engines focusing on performance and a low cost of maintenance. Smaller and simpler than contemporaries, such as the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II, the F-5 costs less to procure and operate, making it a popular export aircraft. Though primarily designed for a day-air superiority rule, the aircraft is also a capable ground attack platform. The F-5A entered service in the early 1960s. During the Cold War, over 800 were produced through 1972 for U.S. allies. It's powered by two General Electric J-85 GE-21 afterburning turbojet engines, developing 3,500 pound force or 16 kilonewtons thrust each dry, 5,000 pound force or 22 kilonewtons with afterburner. The aircraft has a maximum speed of Mach 1.63 a range of 554 miles or 891 kilometers and a service ceiling of 51,800 feet or 15,800 meters. The fighter has seven hardpoints, two wingtip AAM launch rails, four underwing and one underfuselage pylon stations with a capacity of 7,000 pounds or 3,200 kilograms. Viewers may note that relation between U.S. and Iran was not like this earlier. The Imperial Iranian Air Force IIAF, received extensive U.S. equipment in the 1960s and 1970s. Iran received its first 11 F-5As and two F-5Bs in February 1965, which were then declared operational in June 1965. Ultimately, Iran received 104 F-5As and 23 F-5Bs by 1972. From January 1974, with the first squadron of 28 F-5Fs, Iran received a total of 166 F-5E and Fs and 15 additional RF-5As, with deliveries ending in 1976. While receiving the F-5E and F, Iran began to sell its F-5A and B inventory to other countries, including Ethiopia, Turkey, Greece, and South Vietnam. By 1976, many had been sold, except for several F-5Bs retained for training purposes. 
F5s were also used by the IIAF's aerobatic display team, the Golden Crown. Iran voted by national referendum to become an Islamic Republic on the 1st of April 1979. The event was known as the Iranian Revolution. Already complicated relations between the US and Iran went downhill and American supply was unavailable. The new Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force IRIAF, was partially successful at keeping Western fighters in service during the Iran-Iraq War in the 1980s, and the simple F-5 had a good service readiness until late in the war. Initially, Iran took spare parts from foreign sources. Later, it was able to have its new aircraft industry keep the aircraft flying. IRIAF F-5s were heavily involved, flying air-to-air -air and air-to-ground sorties. Iranian F-5s took part in air combat with Iraqi MiG-21, MiG-23, MiG-25, Su-20 and 22, Mirage F-1, and Super Intendarts. During the first years of service, Iranian F-5 fighter aircraft had the advantage in missile technology, using advanced versions of the IR-seeking Sidewinder, later lost with deliveries of new missiles and fighters to Iraq. Iran Aircraft Manufacturing Industrial Company currently produces three aircraft. The Azaraksh, Saika, and Khauser, derived from the F-5. Iranian Air Force possesses a lot of different fighters. There are around 190 fighter aircraft, such as US-made Northrop F-5s, F-4 Phantom II, Grumman F-14, and Russian-made Sukhoi Su-22, Sukhoi Su-24, and MiG-29. The MiG-29 is the most modern fighter, and Iran operates approximately only 25 of these. The air-to-air -air missiles equipping fighters are old, so it's not that only the F-5s are venerable and not available in optimum quantity, the whole Air Force is in a bad shape. Decades of Western sanctions have made it hard to maintain the aging fleet. It's likely that slowly the Air Force will degrade further. Tehran presented its indigenous fighter named IAIO Kahar 313 on February 2, 2013. But there's limited progress and it's unlikely to be a viable combat aircraft anytime soon. Air superiority is the most important element in deciding the outcome of modern conventional war. It's the situation when a military force is able to conduct air operations without prohibitive interference by the opposing force. If a military doesn't control the air, tactical maneuvers on land and sea become extremely difficult. So it's natural that major militaries in the world have put a lot of effort into developing a strong air force. Iran's air force has a lot of problems both in terms of quality and quantity. It's in no position to sustain an aerial confrontation with a major power. While Iran's leadership puts up a brave face and gives provocative statements for the domestic public's consumption, it knows it's in no position to sustain a war with US or Israel.